Buffo, a popular furry attempted to sue Brad Ellis, a trans furry Twitter account who defamed him but failed, highlighting how Twitter enables bigots to thrive. Before being defamed, they were equally sized at 56,000 followers. On April 24th, Brad Ellis posted a Discord screenshot alleging Blue probably message a 14 year old, suggesting Blue was ruining them a pedal. However, it was quickly discovered the image was digitally altered. Blue also showed her private messages showing no conversations between them. Later, Blue tweets her dad bleeds a screenshot. Blue was doxxed and the person who sent the photo to Blue's dad has since been suspended. The Fallout Ellis chat also sent revenge for and taken from Blue's after dark account, given to using conversations with Age individuals. Later, Blue reported someone threatening to shoot them at an upcoming furry convention, and the account was suspended, but more threats have been reported since. On April 28th, Blue would sue Valid Ellis for defamation. They launched a promotional video for a fundraiser. On May 10th, they faced some misinformation. The day after, they reiterated all the money would go to the lawsuit, and if it doesn't work, I'll be refunded. Unfortunately, this will come true on the 16th, citing mental health concerns, and that refunds were received in three to five days. On the 19th, they uploaded a video explanation. They admit their initial amounts of video was unprofessional, trying to get the impression of fearlessness when they were scared. They set the dole to one dollar to avoid pressuring people into donating. Received overwhelming support, with $8.2,000 donated before canceling it. They wanted to hire a lawyer and private investigator to authenticate Valid L's info. They backed out due to legal advisor stating an unwinnable case. While Valid L's defamed Blue and owned the chat, they didn't dox him or contact Blue's parents, making them legally unaccountable. Blue would have to sue everyone involved, which would be unaffordable, along with all the ways Valid L's could circumnavigate the lawsuit. Blue never thought suing someone was easy, but was aware of all the ways courts have failed to bring justice for trans people. They recognized they looked like a coward and a grifter, notably due to their immaturity in handling the situation. They hadn't contacted a lawyer before the lawsuit and found others that would have strengthened their case. They wanted to bring justice to a transphobic account and show their actions had consequences. Blue clarifies the funds receipts were not used for personal expenses. Half the donations will be automatically refunded with the changes to all the funds after contacting GoFundMe. Twitter's in action against Violet Ellis for defaming Bluefoot, violating their synthetic and manipulated media policy, highlights their failure to protect LGBTQ plus people. Originally envisioned that a neutral free street platform attracted journalists and political dissidents, playing a role in the 2011 Arab Spring uprisings. However, trolls and bigots abused Twitter to target and harass others, with high profile users leading due to Twitter's inability to deal with it. While Twitter has introduced rules to tackle harassment and hate speech, enforcing them remains challenging as determining what breaks them is subjective and complex. These decisions have raised concerns about bias and unintended consequences. Twitter wants to be seen as a neutral speech platform while also addressing abuse. The company's role in shaping public discourse comes with immense responsibility. Donald Trump was first flagged by Twitter for spreading misinformation leading up to the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Because of the January 6th insurrection, where thousands of Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol, destructing electoral vote counting and resulting in several deaths. Twitter and social media platforms responded by Funding Trump's accounts. Misinformation was previously thought of as individual bad boats and actors, but this isn't enough. The false idea that the election has been stolen is being echoed across the internet. It's larger than one person, even reaching politicians. Removing Trump is easy, as he excited to attack on his own government. But the millions of people who believe this false story is challenging. Platforms must go beyond defining what they don't allow and provide a positive, constructive alternative. Chaya Right Chick's Twitter account lived to TikTok since April 2021, where both left wing LGBTQ videos with derogatory commentary, featuring hate speech and false claims, especially regarding transgender children's medical care. This account has 2.2 million followers and has become influential among American conservatives, resulting in harassment against teachers, medical providers, children's hospitals, and LGBTQ plus venues. White Chick regularly slurs LGBTQ plus people, along with those providing mental health services to LGBTQ plus youth and LGBTQ plus sex education to students as rumors. There are dozens of incidents of online and real life threats and harassment against a range of targets leading to their tweets, especially those singling out specific events, locations, or people. They received significant media attention after falsely claiming that gender affirming uterus removal was being performed on underage people at Boston Children's Hospital and Children's National Hospital, resulting in harassment campaigns and bomb threats. The account has received several temporary suspension and a permanent TikTok suspension. Section 230 protects social media platforms without effectively addressing harmful content, and the real solution is reform. I urge to advocate for reform to hold hate accounts and social media companies accountable. Without it, more marginalized people will continue to be harmed. To learn more about how Blue Folk got into this situation in the first place and how a law that created the modern internet is allowing to happen, check out this video.